Well, hello there. Hey. Um, so, today is August the 28th. Yeah, it's almost month end. It's oh almost end of the year. End, end of the summer. <laughs> end of the summer. So, today, guys, we wanted to talk about... Technically, assume that things like scope and assumptions don't really apply to you because they're too high level. However, I have an argument that even if you're a developer, right. you still need to have, you need to frame your work around things like assumptions and scope because it makes so much easier and smoother to run projects Absolutely. and to run your work. Yeah, the, pro the project manager needs to sit you down before the project begins as part of an internal kickoff and say, listen, these are the rules of the game that we're playing under. Here are the assumptions and uh, here is the scope. Yeah. So, so in terms of assumptions, so, so Ron, so first thing, you were actually, actually we were talking about right before we started the video. What's yeah. the, difference between, the difference between assumptions and a scope? Assumptions are kind of like scope, but they're more like the rules. They're the rules that we are assuming we all understand in order to achieve the goals. I think it's basically, you're right, it's the rules that on which assumption, which scope relies on. Yes. Right? Like for instance, yes. if I say, okay, well, in scope we're building, you know, let's say we're doing, some, we're doing an intranet, right? And let's say as part of that intranet we're doing some sort of integration. Yeah. Uh, let's say CRM integration, right? right? And then, so, so that's in scope. The integration with CRM, whatever, yes. three web parts are in scope. Yeah. But the assumption is that there is an existing CRM system. Or the assumption right. is that... We're only going to integrate two years worth of data, not yeah. all your data. Or, or like, we're putting things in UAT. Or there is UAT. Or, or assumption right. can be like, UAT will not take longer than two weeks. The, the yeah. system must be accepted within two weeks. So these are basically a boundaries that like validate your budget and your timeline. And yet scope is exactly that. Scope is the boundaries of the project. See, I put assumptions more around, yeah. Assumptions well, are one level below scope. They're almost, it's responsibilities that result in the boundaries. Assumption is like an iceberg it's always better to know it's there. So for example, I assume the deadline is next week and not tomorrow, right? right? So for example, even if it's a small component that you're working on, you have to say, you know what, I assume that I get back to you next week yeah, and now, not tomorrow. Yeah, now it's also important. A lot of things that you put down as assumptions in the proposal to get the work, they will end up as scope items when you do the scope document. Well, let's assume we're not doing the proposal. Let's okay. assume it's kind of like, okay. you know, you're, you're a developer on a project. Okay. And that's the whole argument that you, even if you're a developer on a project, you technically should still build assumptions and build scope for your work. Oh, yeah. You can't just say, okay, project, Mr. Project Manager or Architect, um, I have to write this code. Okay, well, I guess I'll go back to my desk and write this code, right? You still have to be like, okay, when do you need this by? Right. Okay, and does do you need two years of data? Okay, right. yeah. uh, what else do you need, right? Like things that you yeah. need to tell them. Well, for example, you need to say, I assume no one else is working on this code but me. Because right. what if someone else is doing an integration? Yeah. Or I assume we have a license for this third party I want to use, right? right. Like you want to you want to use third party that generates PDF documents. Yeah. You need to have some. You need to assume that okay, we need an additional three thousand dollars to spend on that. Right. Let's say. Exactly. I assume that using open source is allowed in your organization. Some organizations don't allow use of open source. Right. It's like yeah. it's a reality because the license, the, the some of the these licenses say that um, you have to base the product. Is the pro if you take their their like jQuery for example, I think yeah. that's what it was. If you use jQuery, any derivatives of your work are also open source. So if you're working for like a government, they're, they're never going to let you use the derivative, aka the pro project that you're working on, to be open source. Uh, so so that's important. So the also an assumption is uh, you know I assume it takes what we should do another podcast on exactly just on that. that. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, that's like important. a big topic. That's good. Or I assume it takes no longer than five days to deploy my code to UAT. Like in large organizations, right. you may need, um, you know, it may it may take like weeks, or they may do it like on the 18th of the month, or something like that, or 
third Sunday of the month or something like right. that. So you need to make sure that right. when you're asked to do something, especially if you're a delivery lead, uh, you know, on a project, that these things won't block you. You know, you so, may be so, done coding. Do you know what? Do you know what? I'm, I know you don't want to go back to the proposal bit, but mm. I'm still no, going to no, go say ahead. I'm still going to say that all of these things that are assumptions in the proposal submitted by your uh, salesperson or partner in the company yeah. or principal in your, your company, um, these uh, assumptions end up forming the, the basis on the scope document and on even like the RACI model, you know, like yeah. the, the roles and responsibilities. Exactly. Uh, and that actually yeah. ties really nice into my next point. Every time you make assumptions, you have to communicate to people that these assumptions impact. Um, so in this case, we said the third party, right? Whoever, I guess the project manager would be your, someone that you communicate around the third party or architect uh, to make sure that you made the right decision around technology that you're going to use this third party. Right. But also, you know, and some of the tips around communication of that uh, is, you know, things, you know, it doesn't need to be like, you know, well, here are my assumptions, right? Because that sounds very kind of like, well, here are my assumptions. But you can say, you know, it could be as simple as an email saying, you know what, unless you say otherwise, I'm operating under an assumption that we're using this third party. Right. Or is it correct that you assume... You know, it, it, it's so important for you yeah. to say that as a developer to your yep. project manager yep. or to someone else who's in yep. charge of communication because things may come up yep. that they are never aware of that they it's their yep. responsibility to now go back yeah. to that proposal yeah. uh, and say what did we agree to do exactly part of this. exactly yeah no it's critical to communicate Criti that as a developer yeah. as a developer you can't just sit you in can't a box assume on that. you know even if you're not an independent you still need there's a lot of communication because you can create a lot of work for yourself that's unnecessary yes. or you can say you know what i'm assuming this and then Whole bunch of things for example you know i'm assuming that i'm going to use a third party or i'm assuming that i'm going to use a jquery and someone says yeah go ahead use jquery where, where if you you know if you don't clarify that you're going to have to re rewrite a whole bunch of code or reinvent the wheel and sometimes you have to yeah. but if you don't make that assumption clear you never know so assumptions are critical the most misunderstandings that we have on projects is because there's there's not a meeting of the minds on something yeah. because somebody had an assumption that they never explained to the other person. Or never confirmed. The other person had a different assumption on the yeah. same topic and that's the miscommunication. Exactly. It's because the assumptions weren't put on the table. And it's, sometimes it's tough to even know. You, 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 you have so many assumptions in your head when you do things sometimes, you don't even get them all out. Yeah. And communication is another subject which I was hoping to touch in this episode, but I think we're going to touch on the next episode because there's so much yeah. that we can talk about communication and how yeah. to communicate. I had, it's, it amazes me around the communication and the bit that you said that depending how you say things, you can save yourself like 40 hours of work, 8 hours of work. You can literally save yourself days of frustration based on how you communicate and what kind of response you get. And, and there's so many good tips and tricks how to do it. Uh, oh what time of the day, who do you ask? What's the chain of questions? How do you ask? I, I even have a way I yeah. deliver bad news. Tell us. Okay, so here's my rule. Yeah. Start with the good news. Yeah, sandwich. <laughs> and, yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Go I, end with, I end with the bad news, yeah. but on the bad news, the way I sandwich it with another piece of good news yeah. is always, but the good news is we caught this early, or but the good news is we now have a better understanding of. Yeah. So start with something positive, then say the bad news, and then rephrase that bad news as good news in terms of, you know, however yeah. you do that. We caught yeah. it early. Blah, blah. Yeah. So scope is another thing. So we, we kind of yeah. have a distinction between what scope, what's assumptions. Right. Scope, I think, so scope is, is critical to have. Even if you're working on a, you know, single window application. Right. Whatever you guys work in CRM. Yeah, what yeah. do you guys work in CRM? Oh, a, a single 
bit of a, a business process. <laughs> a button on a ribbon. A business process okay. that we're going to work on. Right. You still have to kind of assume, like for example, uh, you know, I, again, I'm talking about assumptions, but you still have right. to understand the scope. Like for example, is uh, if it's a web application, is IE8 in scope? Because some things may not execute technologically in IE8 right. and may require you know, two months of effort to fix. The way I help myself think about scope always, um, and in, in terms of a CRM bit of work, mm -hmm. it's we're working around a particular process, is I break scope down into, into I call one bit temporal scope. I think it's such a fancy way to say No, no, go ahead. No, oh, it's a what terrible it? word. But my point is time yeah. is scoped, uh, resources are scoped, um, the staff of the company that you're putting the thing in for, the department, there's departmental scope. Yeah. What departments are we going to impact? Who within a department are we going to impact? Yeah. So there's that scope. Um, and then you get to the software. But right. there's departmental scope, temporal scope, resourcing scope. Uh, there's a number of different scope brackets that yeah. you can put there to help yourself think about it and then you quickly start knocking them out yeah. because if you just say scope you kind of go eh. where do I start right yeah where do I start yeah like yeah if you look at the proposal your scope might be like 10 bullets but yeah. once you look in the project like yes. each little component can have 10 bullets yes. like okay what's my scope around like what kind of authentic like am I coding authentication Am I, like, what's what's the bit that I'm actually, what's in my Am scope of responsibility? Am I impacting the whole organization yeah. by this authentication bit that I'm doing, or exactly. just people within one area? Exactly, right? So you need to know what the scope is, no matter how, how you know, how large, like, obviously project managers yes. and deal shapers, people that shape deals, they, their scope is very broad. Their scope is, you know, we're building a website for you. Uh, we're not doing an intranet or we're doing intranet, but not extranet or we, right. we're creating three business processes and not five. Most of the time you want to always phrase scope in the positive, mm. not in the negative, because what does the system do? Well, it, what does it not do? Well, it doesn't make toast. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't do drive, a bunch of things. doesn't put my socks on in the morning. How many not statements can you have? It can go yeah. on forever. So really, you want to phrase it in the positive. The only yeah. time you want to state it in a negative yeah. is, is when I go back to how I group scope by headings, where I say yeah, yeah. time scope, department scope, resource scope. Um, uh, coding scope, tools scope, yeah. is sometimes there's a blurry edge on those things, time scope. It's between this time and that time, but well, it's not going to happen outside that time. I, then I, you can say it in the negative, but it's that yeah. line on the edge of those So those here's groupings. what we're going to do, here's what's the scope. But yeah, I mean, one thing as yeah. I mentioned uh, also before we started is I think if you know that your customer or there's some there's been something during negotiation whether it's during the deal shaping or during the you know architect slash dev lead or developer discussion if right. there was something you, you guys were on a fence around how are you going to do something what's going to be in scope what's going to be out of scope and and you decided that you're not going to do it it's okay to put it in a negative scope saying it we will not do that yeah. just so people yeah that yeah. are reading this, they're like, oh, yeah, 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 we talked about it, and right. it's not in scope. Right. Obviously, the system doesn't bake pancakes and whatever, right. makes yes. toast. And, yeah. But, you know, also, one of the assumptions is, or one of the scope items is also that, but not that. Yeah. So, but a couple of yeah. things, speaking oh, on, the, on the food analogies we have here. So, a couple of things that you can use in your project and during your meetings. Yeah. Soft, software scope is like a dough. The more... You can shape it before you put it in the oven, but the longer it's in the oven, the harder it is to change. Yeah, what do you think about that? Yeah, true statement. Right? It becomes a bread. And then if you start cutting it, then that's it. Everyone's well, people it. constantly try to change it, but I think the longer you work on the project, the more you're locking down. And the more visible it's going to be, right? Once it's fully baked, it's like a, it's like a concrete. If you start reshaping it after it's cured then yeah. you're gonna end up with, with a bunch of broken concrete everywhere yeah. so um, 
what else? Uh, scope is like a bad posture. You can ignore it for some time, but then it'll cost you a fortune to fix. <laughs> that Come should on. be familiar I'm for developers. Feeling, I'm feeling severely yeah, so <laughs> so Am I sitting straight? Scope is like a carbon monoxide. It'll kill you without you noticing unless you have it. You have an alarm for it. So that's another thing, right? Like, yeah, that's unless really, you let that's really big, right? Really unless big. you get a hang on your scope, people are just gonna throw things on it until yeah. the pizza crust is gonna collapse. Yeah, no, pizza I crust agree. being your project. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It can easily, it easily and quickly gets out of control. Yeah. And we all, yeah. So, so I think these are two that we can sort of get started. I think that um, yeah. as kind of tips and tricks. And I think next time uh, we'll we'll touch on communication. Yeah. And because uh, there's a whole subject that there's it's so interesting how you can actually shape and make your life much easier yeah. by properly and early and, and help your help whoever's managing that project make it better for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we'd love to hear your guys' comments. Uh, what do you think about some of these, you know, events, things that you got on, on your on your project, and some of the assumptions, the tips, and assumptions in scope that you think are are important? Can we put 20 seconds on the clock and then see how many of these scope is like a box of chocolates? Can we do scope? Yeah. Scope is like a running river. Scope is. Is it, how is it like a running room? I don't know, I just made that. Well, uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Thanks. See ya.